Hello everyone, this video is going to be on the uh, phylum Formicutes of bacteria and we in the previous video I discussed about actinobacteria and on this you can see actinobacteria I already discussed the Formicutes is this video and <coughs> to get started with Formicutes they are the bacteria uh, they are the uh, phylum with uh, which contains all gram positive bacteria okay so this phylum contains all gram positive bacteria but the notable feature is that some genera of this phylum <coughs> may not stain as dark as that of a normal gram positive bacteria why because they have an outer cell membrane containing some <coughs> or an incomplete outer cell membrane okay so they may have an incomplete outer cell membrane and when we stain with <coughs> when we stain with crystal violet we will find that uh, the uh, some cvi complexes will be trapped in this outer membrane which will be washed away with alcohol so this is actually this type of bacteria doesn't actually stain completely like that of the gram positive bacteria but they contain most of the gram positive bacteria so what are some examples of this gram positive bacteria or uh, what are the, some examples of this uh, bacteria having this incomplete outer cell membrane outside so they can be the so they can be the megaspheri and the zymophilus as you can see over here so another dif another feature of this phylum can be can be found out from the word itself okay so the, what is the word that is the form cute so form means tough resistant strong and cute means skin so if you combine that we will get something with a strong tough skin and if you have studied about endospores that will be the feature so many or almost all bacteria in this phylum contain or has the ability to form endospores so almost all bacteria form endospores what are another what is another feature about this phylum formicutes that is that they have a low g plus c content so in the genetic material there are very less amount of g and c okay so that genetic material is not that much uh, stable but maybe they do not need that much stable genetic material okay so low g plus c ratio okay now <coughs> now that is the defining feature of this formicutes family so when we when the people studied phylogeny and classified uh, related organisms into formicutes they found that almost all uh, or all uh, bacterium actually has g plus c low g plus c ratio so that can be called as a defining feature of formicutes phylum okay so now some genera of this formicutes phylum is responsible for uh, lactic acid metabolism so what we mean by la lactic acid metabolism it is actually spoiling of the milk into curd as you can think about so that is the some of the some generalized responsible for example if we give some examples we will find that it ha it contains genera like that of the lactobacillus very famous and the leuconostoc so these are some characters of the uh, phylum formicute so let us study about the classes in this phylum and also about some important genera in this phylum okay to talk about the classes we have in the phylum formicutes three classes important classes are three there is one more but that is not much that that much important so if we see there are bacillales, lactobacillales and the clostridium so these three are important classes of this phylum and there are uh, genera important genera in this bacteria uh, class bacillales <coughs> so there are bacilli streptococcus and listera okay 
there are actually many more genera of this phylum Firmicutes. Like in this phylum Firmicutes, for instance, there are 273 genera. But we do not need to know all the genera. It is not possible to know all the genera in the world. But some important genera are worth knowing. Okay. So what are some uh, other genera in the other classes? We will find Lactobacillus and Leuconostoc in the Lactobacillales. And in the Clostridium, we have all these genera like the Megasphere, Zymophilus, and other maybe the Heliobacterium, which can do photosynthesis sometimes. <coughs> but the most important one is the Clostridium. So, for the uh, genera Clostridium from the phylum or from the class Clostridium. So, that are some important genera. So, there is a, actually a small mistake over here. Let me correct it right now. So, that is not Streptococcus, it is Staphylococcus. Okay, so actually, I made a previous video where I mentioned it as Streptococcus. So, I had to make this new video for that. Anyways, it is Staphylococcus. Staphylococcus. <coughs> okay, now let us discuss about this genera. Okay, so first of all, we have the bacilli. Bacilli, you may uh, by the word bacilli, you may remember the rod shaped bacteria. Okay, so we call them bacilli. The shape we describe it as bacilli, and you are right, bacilli contains all the rod shaped bacteria. So this genus contains all the rod shaped bacteria. And what can be some examples of this genus? Some important members are bacilli thiourigens. So that this bacteria. Has genetic material has been studied a lot and this genetic material has been incorporated in some types of plants to make it resistant to pests okay <coughs> now some other important genera can be bacillus anthracis <coughs> so that genera is actually responsible for causing the disease anthrax in human okay and some important genera can be bacillus amylo liquefications that genera is actually responsible for uh, producing many antibiotics and has the industrial significance so they are some important genera of the bacilli there are important genera of the phylum strapto uh, staphylococci but coccus but the important feature of this phylum strapto uh, staphylococci is that they are grape shaped like this so they actually act come close to each other and form this type of groups as you can see in this picture okay so another uh, feature of this staphylococcus uh, phylum is that they are found in the mucous membranes of human beings like that of the mucus in the nasal cavity and that of the mucus in the uh, gastric lining and etc so then we have the listera it is responsible for causing listerosis okay it is it actually affects 20% of the population and it is actually a very deadly disease it is caused in the uh, people which has immunodeficiency so it is not caused in normal people but it ha it is caused in people having immunodeficiency and uh, this video is not about listerosis anyways this genera most of the species in this genera are actually responsible for causing listerosis now the lactobacillales contains all the lactic acid metabolizing bacteria and they can spoil the milk to curd now the lactobacillus is actually uh, another uh, uh, one such genera which can spoil milk to curd and one more important significance of this lactobacillus is that it is found in the vagina of women so they create the acidic pH over there so that was about the lactobacillales and the clostridium they contain the many genera about this incomplete cell membranes also okay and uh, this clostridium actually is obligately anaerobic and they contain many types of pathogens like the clostridium botuli which cause the botuli botulism and also the clostridium titani which causes the titanus <coughs> okay so all those type of pathogens is included in Clostridium. So that is pretty much all about the Firmicutes. <laughs> Hope you like the video. Please like, comment and subscribe. And see you in the next video where we are going to probably talk about Tenericutes. Okay. So 
Thank you again and bye.